Hello, I'm James O'Brien, and I'm here to answer some questions from Waterstones about my new book, How They Broke Britain. Rupert Murdoch is chapter one of the book, and uh, obviously he got early wind of what was in it, which informed his decision to step down from the head of the company that has probably done more to corrupt public discourse in the English-speaking world than any other. What difference will him stepping down make? I don't think the direction of traffic will change. Um, the son that remains uh, and is taking over at Lachlan seems very much cut from the similar cloth. The other son, the one who apparently saw the light, James, and, and quit the company some years ago, he's quoted in the book because, like Paul Dacre, the editor-in-chief of the, of the Mail Group, he has spoken in the past about believing that the, 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 the punting of poison, the selling of snake oil, is intrinsic to commercial success. And, and I think Lachlan Murdoch very much subscribes to that school of thought. So I don't think Fox News is suddenly going to discover any reverence for, for facts or truth. And I don't think that the, um, the, the outer fringes of the Murdoch empire in this country is likely to do so either. But you, you just have to hope that they don't um, start corrupting the bits of the business that are still largely a force for good, uh, like the Times. You know, there's a, there's a few things in the book that I wondered while writing, um, would they seem excessive or exaggerated or, or even plain wrong? And I talk, in fact, I, I, I don't think I coined this word, but I, I certainly use the word farageification to describe what has happened to the Conservative Party. I trace, actually, from when the leader of the BMP appeared on Question Time right through to the, uh, you know, the, the apparent embracing of BMP adjacent ideas by the actual Conservative Party. I described the role that Farage played in that and the, and the party's very conscious decision, but, but particularly post-Brexit, to tack ever further to the sort of nativist right. So he would fit right in to the Tory party. I, I, you know, and I, I still fondly remember days, only probably six or seven years ago, where that would have disgusted many Conservative Party politicians and, and many Conservative voters. I, I, I don't know how many would still be disgusted by it, because I don't know that anyone could deny it's a party into which he would fit seamlessly. So whether he fancies it or not will depend entirely on his ego, um, uh, and uh, whether or not he is achieving sufficient levels of the attention he's always so desperate for from whatever it is he's doing these days. I don't know that there is anybody who was vying for inclusion in, in the book and didn't make the final cut. You would expect there to be, wouldn't you? But, but the way it breaks down, there are a couple of people in there that I think you'll be surprised by until you finish the chapter and then you'll understand perfectly why they've been included. And I toyed with the idea of not putting Liz Truss in, A, because it's a very short chapter anyway, and B, because um, she's more a, a symptom than a cause of the bigger picture of what's happened. Obviously, she's, she's the key cause of the disaster that she personally presided over. But I don't know that there is... I suppose I could have picked on columnists rather than owners and editors. Uh, some of them have done untold harm, but they've only ever done untold harm on the editor or the owner's shilling. So, so, so I left that out. Um, this is one of those questions that I'll think of 10 answers to on my way home after recording this. But, but right now, I can't think of, a, of an obvious candidate for Chapter 11. Sorry. How They Broke Britain is available at Waterstones, in-store and online.